Here we are back in shores of Hazaron, on the beach where we left off. Our fire is gone, it must have gone out while we were offline, and uh, we should be ready to look for a good site to build our city. Uh, we could live out our days on this planet as a primitive indigenous tribesman, but somehow we have to know there's more to this game than that. The only way to advance farther at this point is to create a city. Now we could build a city anywhere, anywhere where we're standing, on any dry land. We can't build it uh, on the coastline, and we don't have the technology to build it under the sea. So uh, I'm going to start running in this direction, because if we'll recall, we were heading for the, uh, the sea to the southwest. I'm going to switch to top-down view using the backspace key. All right. It looks like our a lot of little lakes and stuff on this piece of terrain. And there's the sea. Now I like being next to the sea. Uh, uh oh. What was that? Who's this? It's Jiva and Navbuk. Where are they? A little bit to the east? What you'll also find is that as you move around your world, the village tends to move to where you're at, and uh, those outlying scouts uh, found me and told me where the village is, and sure enough, there it is, not far from where I am. Ah, something's hurting me. I'm going to run faster. Unfortunately, I've been running too much, and I'm tired. Run, run, don't die. There's my trusty healer standing there. Hey, healer. I could use your help. Where are you? Healer, cat colonum. The village does move. It doesn't go away and respawn. Okay, let's talk to cat colonum. Hello. And he says, you need healing. And I'm all healed up. No, he said I was healthy. I guess that thing didn't hurt me. I thought I for sure I saw blood. Okay. Now the ideal spot to start your first city is somewhere where there's ore. In top-down view, uh, we can see resources on the nearby terrain. This particular area is rich in valuable resources. Uh, this uh, gray-looking rock with, rock with little gold flecks is ore. Uh, that can be uh, smelted into metal. We'll be needing that. Uh, and there are other valuable and useful things here. Using the backslash key, you can switch between other overlays of information. The next overlay shows plant resources. Uh, there's our forest where we probably started. And uh, wait, which way am I looking? North, east is more or less where I came from. But either way, these icons show us the resources uh, of plants. The larger icons are where trees are. The smaller icons are where shrubs are. And the icon shows what uh, resource can be gathered there. Now, there isn't an icon on every single one. Just like if I go back a page here, using shift backslash, you can go back through the, the overlay sequence. Uh, this gray rock doesn't mean that if I go over there I'm going to find one single gray rock. Which direction was that? I'm going to face toward it. Up is forward in top-down view, and I'm going to go in that direction. It's indicating a patch of them or a vein of them that has breached the surface where it can be seen and found easily. That looks like some right there. We have superb ore, quality 239. Wow. Quite lucky. See, there's another one. And so because of that, as you move around, these icons could change their positions. They, they're they just indicating a, a, a patch of, the, uh, of that resource. <clears throat> so ore is essential. Let's build our first city here. There's no reason to go any farther. Maybe some of our villagers will move in. To build a city, we need a flag. We handcrafted that at the end of our last video. And uh, now let's use the construction window to start a city. 
in the construction window is divided into panes and these panes are accessed here with these buttons. The one we care about most at the moment is the top pane and the top button is going to create the town square of a new city. The only construction material required to make this is a flag and that is indicated I'm going to click that, out, that is indicated right here the only construction material required is a flag I'm going to switch to top-down view so that I can place my town square now when I uh, initially start the command to place a town square the line is pointing due north that's just for reference and uh, you can use arrow keys to rotate it and the rotation increment is controlled right here. A, a very slight subtlety of the town square is that uh, this row of materials indicates what it's made out of. Now we don't actually have these materials and it doesn't actually use any of them to make it but it does affect the appearance of the uh, of the light pole that appears in the town square and the appearance of the terrain so uh, you may experiment with those it, it otherwise doesn't change anything now I'm not going to put my town square right on my patch of ore because then I wouldn't be able to put a mine there to mine that patch of ore so I'm going to start my town square actually some distance away I, I kinda liked the forest back here and I, I want to get out of all this water and I also want to be closer to the shore. So I'm going to put my town square right there. It's, it's telling, it, it'll tell you various things. When you see an icon, if you click, you'll get a message that tells you what really that means. And this little area here looks fine. Let's just start right there. Now we've got to name our new town. Let's suggest a name. Uh, Kugel. going to call this uh, Dive Town, since that's our theme. And because the the solar system has never been named, I the name will carry on up to the solar system. And uh, it, you don't have to name it that. The convention is to carry the name on up. We're going to call this, uh, we'll just let the name carry on up. And the same is true of the sector. Uh, apparently I'm in a sector where there that has not been named and so it's going to get named Dive Town. I'm just going to call it the Dive Sector. Dive. Create the town square. Boom! There's the town square. That graphic effect we saw on the screen, it made a, uh, a splash, indicated that my uh, my home has been declared. Oops! No, don't do that. I, I hit it again to turn off. That's not what I want to see. Now, if I die or I recall home, I will recall to that town square. Uh, previously, I've been fortunate in that I haven't died yet at all. Uh, previously, had I died, I would have respawned or come back to life in the village, wherever it was on the planet. I'm going to head over toward my town square. It's actually going to be a little while before I'm ready to mine ore. I'd just like to know there's some in the area. And just for uh, in the for what it's worth department uh, there was another resource I saw in this area I don't see it now that is also very valuable and useful in your startup area and that is oil I did see oil I didn't point it out oh, I'm tired I should just walk because then I can save my run oops Back to top down view and look around a little. There's that oil. The oil always appears as a dual icon, which is a drop of oil and a can of liquefied petroleum, uh, because you can always get both resources at the same location. Okay, I'm heading for my town square. I've got some stamina now, I'm going to run. I'm actually noticing the pole at the town square. That's where I'm heading. The town square is beneficial in that while you're on the town square, wild animals don't see you. This is a safe area for uh, for.
for starting and for building your town. Your, the pole in the town square shows the owner of the city. In this case, I'm the owner, so my flag is on the pole. Uh, it also has a light pole, which is giving a dim uh, patch of light underneath it because it's because I don't have electrical power. It does give me dim light, at least give me the credit for a, a candle or something. And I'm going to switch to top-down view again, and we'll see our town square. I'm going to lower my view with the squ left square bracket button. And uh, since I'm safe here, I'm going to take a look around a little more. And let's think about what we're going to do first. In order to build a city, uh, we need things. Uh, there, there's a lot we need. Let's start with something logical. Let's start with a farm. I'm going to go to the food pane here, and the top left button is a farm. Now, when I click that farm, it shows me that it requires stone to build it. It also can manufacture all these things, and uh, uh, some helpful information here is that it's going to add uh, one job to my city just by building this. It's also going to add a job for every level of it that I build. Uh, this farm can be built up to two levels tall. Uh, with whatever material I use, it can be two levels tall. And so that means at two levels, it's going to provide three jobs and four homes, because there'll be two homes for each level. That's probably way too much information. I didn't need to jump into that yet. Let's just put this farm down. Uh, when I go to place the farm, it's showing red because it's overlapping the town square. Whenever uh, you're blocked by something like that, if you if you push the space bar, it'll cause your uh, the thing you're placing to rotate to align to it. And that's very handy when placing along roads. Now you'll notice when it, I get off of that town square, it turns green. Now the uh, construction rules are are essentially very simple. There's two rules. You I mean, you can build things in two places, next to the town square and next to roads. In this case, I don't have any roads, so I'm going to build my farm next to my town square. Uh, things that have land requirements, like this farm, are shown with an inner boundary and an outer boundary. The inner boundary is the home site, and the outer boundary is the land required by the farm. The land for sites like this can often... Uh, extend over water a little bit and doing using that you can uh, sometimes uh, reach uh, mineable or wellable materials that are just offshore by letting the uh, the land portion overlap the, the water. In this case I'm going to put my farm right here I'm going to roll the mouse wheel to make that number on it go to a two. That means I want to build two levels of farm or a two-story farm the little vegetables there shows me that it's going to make vegetables and that's also indicated right here. There are hotkeys to change what it's making and what it's made out of while you're placing this. I don't recall what they are offhand. This list is showing what the farm is going to be made out of. Let's stick with stone. It's the easiest to acquire at this point. It's available everywhere in every environment. Okay, I've placed the farm and I'm going to push escape to kill this drawing command, otherwise it would let me continue placing more farms. Uh, or I could push this hand here, though I, I honestly never use that. I always hit escape. <clears throat> Alright, let's go over and see what we just did. We now have a dark farm. It's surrounded by fence posts to show us the, uh, the boundaries of the farm itself. The home site is in the middle. Okay, now I don't have to actually go all the way to the home site. I'm going to look at this city window now, and this shows me that I'm standing on a construction site because I can work this construction site. And I'm going to do that. 200 labor un units of labor are required to build it, and 30 units of stone. As long as I stay on the farm site, the uh, the construction site will continue to be worked. Now, I, I had just dragged that to another screen. 
And so I, as long as I stay within the fence post here, I can run around and explore and look at things. And, uh, and my guy is considered to be still working the construction site. Now we've got to be careful. That thing could be dangerous. What is that? A carnivorous furian with 75 hit points. Yeah, that's pretty dangerous. What's he doing? He's eating a piece of meat. So he killed something. I'm going to run over here to this farm. Now, now he may very well come and attack me. I'm going to stay clear of him. On the home site, we see uh, silhouettes on the ground of where the actual buildings are going to appear. Now, it's very wise to stay off of those spots because at some point this building is going to be constructed. And uh, uh, if we're standing on one of those, we could all of a sudden be stuck inside the building. And that's kind of uh, uncomfortable to get out of. You have to recall to your home or something. It's just a pain in the butt. Okay, now we've you let's take a look at our construction window again. All the labor has been applied, but we still don't have any stone, so we can't really build this house. So where is stone going to come from? Well, it comes from the ground, and there's lots of it. The whole planet's made of, of it in, in large amounts. So let's build a mine. A mine will mine stone for us. I'm going to go over to this construction window, open, go to the mining, whatever this tab is, the manufacturing tab, and hit the mine button up here. A mine also has a land requirement, but it's not nearly as much as a farm. I'm going to put the mine right over here, and I'm going to align it to the town square with spacebar, and I'm going to just want to be tidy. You don't have to be very tidy. You'll notice they're fairly uh, forgiving about where they go. Uh, nothing says this has to be straight. It could be like that. Uh, it's just however you want it. There are some... Uh, here's a bit of it, valuable information, though. There's a straight green line that goes from the center of the mine space out to the edge. That green line indicates uh, what is considered to be the front of the building. It's uh, the position of that green line at the outside boundary, where it's touching the boundary, it kind of makes a T intersection, is going to determine the altitude of this thing in the terrain. And uh, if it was hilly, it would be easier to illustrate that, but I'm in a relatively flat area. Uh, but uh, essentially, by putting that right up to the edge of the town square, the altitude of the mine edge is going to line up nicely with that town square. And that's really, it really works great with roads uh, on hills and things. At least there's a point there that will be at the same level as whatever you place it. And uh, that's really important. Okay, so a mine can be up to four levels deep. And I'm going to go ahead and roll my mouse wheel till four levels show. It's going to be made out of stone, though actually a mine doesn't require stone to make it. Uh, similar to the town square, the choice of construction material will affect the appearance of the building, but it doesn't really require those materials. And uh, uh, this mine is going to mine stone, which is what we want. I'm going to click it right there, and I'm going to hit escape to get away from that. And I'm going to run over to that mine. I'm going to have to dig this mine. Now I'm having to do all this stuff because this town has only me as its inhabitant. Uh, once I get uh, some homes built, uh, namely that farm over there, uh, the indigenous people will move into those homes and they'll populate this city and they'll start doing these jobs that I'm doing now. And then uh, and then the workflow ch will change more to a uh, uh, a planning mode and allowing them to do the work rather than you having to do all the work. Let's get this. I'm working the construction site at this mine. And I'll just wait. If I had a tool, it would go faster. This, in, this little clock icon with a minus sign by it is telling me that this. Sh if I had a shovel, the time would go, f uh, would be reduced to dig this mine. And all these other things. If I had mining equipment, if I had dynamite, electrical power and computers, all those things would make this go faster and I'd probably have been done already. At this stage of the game we have none of those things but we have our hands so we can crab through the dirt until we dig a mine. 
Now this is four stories, so it's going to keep, once it finished the first story, the construction, uh, a page was added, but we're not going to look at that yet. Uh, the construction window continues working as long as I keep it on this page. Uh, just like if I leave the construction site, if I switch pages to this page, uh, the construction will stop. It, it, I, I'm only considered to be working on the actual construction if that's the page that I have available, or if that's the page that's visible. Okay, that's enough of those for the moment. Let's switch to the manufacturing page. We've built two levels of our mine now, and that's going to show up as two available uh, things that look alike here. What these are is a, a manufacturing process. This mine can manufacture stone. It looks a lot like the handcrafting process. It has a fetch button and a run button, and uh, since no nothing is required in this column, there is nothing to fetch. Uh, these optional c components, are not always optional, these are, all happen to be optional, do different things. In this case, mine machinery would increase the amount of output, and shovels would make it go faster. So let's run that. And now uh, this process is running. It has nine seconds, eight seconds to go. We're going to run this process. I can run both of them at once. And the nice thing about manufacturing processes is once they have all their materials and they're going, you can switch pages. So I can come back over here and, and uh, do some more construction on this while, uh, while the manufacturing process is running. I'm going to come over here and see what happened. That one got done. I, I know it got done because as soon as it gets done, it tells me what was produced. It made 10 units of stone, and they were quality 55. Okay, and this process finished. It made 10 units of stone. They're quality 55. Let's run both of those again, because we want to build up a lot of stone. Where did that stone go? Well, it's in the city's uh, stockpile. Let's talk to the city. To talk to a city, you need to stand in any one of its developments. In this case, I'm in the mine still, because I'm doing this work. I can run these again. And uh, and call them. Just like saying hello to a tribesman, you have to wake them up. Cities always listen on the trade channel. So let's open up a new channel. This is called the trade channel. And uh, since we're standing here, we can make our range be voice range. In, in our solar system, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it turns out if I broadcast a hello at solar system range, I'll get answers from every city that can hear me. And uh, if there were more than one city in the solar system, they would all answer. And it might be more than I was I was looking for. And I run these again. It's good to keep to keep on top of these. Eventually, the city's available space to store stuff will be filled up, and uh, and then that would be indicated here the amount of storage space the city has grows with the number of buildings. Every building you add, not everyone, but uh, a lot of the buildings you add, add storage space. Pretty much anything that manufactures anything adds storage space. Since a mine manufactures things, it adds storage space. So we've got a fair bit right now. Okay, we hailed on the trade channel and we got an answer from Dive Town. When cities answer, rather than having all their output get mixed together on the trade channel, each one will open a separate private channel to you that starts with its city's name and it's followed by your avatar's ID. Now it's not really secret or private. Any other player who opened a, a channel just by doing this and type it, who typed in that exact thing would be able to communicate with you on this channel and they would hear the broadcasts of the city. Okay, the city, in its hail, gives us some information about the city. Uh, the fact that this is an automated reply tells me that the city has a population of zero. But either way, let's, uh, let's ask them what they have in stock. That's what this button does. Uh, ask for the inventory of the city. They said their population is zero. Uh, it's isolated. All that means is we're not connected to any other cities by road, by air, by sea, in any way. And uh, we, this city has a hundred units of bad stone in stock.
all the time I was chattering, I could have been digging mine. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we've got stone. That's an, We need 30 stone for each story of our farm. Where was that farm? I'm going to look at top-down view again. There it is over there. Now, one of the overlays in top-down view, I'm going to switch to the plants. The next one after the plants shows buildings. And so from this, I can see that there's a mine here. It's under construction, and there's two out of four levels. Three out of four. No, I just finished one. And the uh, farm over here has zero out of two levels. And the, uh, the town square. Okay, uh, the town square only ever has one level, so it doesn't show enough. I'm going to run over to that farm. I've got enough stone here to build it. I think I'm on the farm now. There we are, farm. It tells me right here in the top left corner that I'm on a farm. If I just work this construction site, it will pull in this stone. Keep going. I didn't hit it. There we go. I got 30 quality 55 stone, and there's it. By fetching that stone, it added some labor just to install it. And so uh, my labor went up. Now I'm building the second level. The first level of the farm is done. Let's keep moving up here to the middle. We'll see this thing get done. That, that thing is still eating over there. I'm lucky it's satisfied with whatever it's eating, and it's not trying to eat me. Okay, farm is done. It's making vegetables. Vegetables uh, require sunlight and water in the environment. If I push fetch, it will try to fetch some. Now I got I, I push fetch over and over again. The uh, uh, the prevalence of water in the environment can determine how many fetches are required to gather it. If there's very little water on the entire planet, I might have to push fetch a lot. If there's a lot of water, I, I might have to push it once, and I would get the water I needed. This requirement is not satisfied by the presence of visible water in the patch where the farm is. It's only based on the overall water prevalence in the, on the planet's environment. Sunlight depends on the actual presence of sunlight. And so, because it's dark out, I can't fetch sunlight right now. Once the city has electrical power, Electrical power will substitute for sunlight, as if you were uh, using electrical lighting, and uh, and you can produce crops at night. It's going to have to be quite a bit lighter out to make vegetables. This employ citizen checkbox, what what this does is, once a population starts to uh, move to my town, this determines whether those people are allowed to run this process. If I turn, normally you would want them on. There are some processes that you'll find that you don't want to have them on, especially if they consume money from your tax base. Okay, farms can make a lot of different things, and uh, some of them are based on animals. You can directly make animals. You can make some animal byproducts that are reasonably easy to make directly from animals, uh, like cheese and eggs and uh, fertilizer. These uh, processes, let's make uh, cheese using pasture. That means my animals are going to just eat from the environment. It, if my environment had no plants, I might have to import hay or silage to feed my animals. Silage is a form of animal feed that can be made from all kinds of different kinds of products of a farm. It's a way of synthesizing them all down into just something, into generic animal food. All right, so let's make cheese by feeding animals from our pasture. And we see here in this requirement that it, it needs water in the environment, and it's going to gather vegetation from the environment. And there it got three of them, six of them, ten of them, and we've got everything we need to run that. Animal byproduct processes can run uh, at night. I'm going to switch back to top-down view. Now what we'll find is that half of the farm has rows of plants. Those plants are vegetable plants. If I f those are exactly the plants that this environment produces has that produce vegetables. And you can walk up to them 
and pick vegetables from them, just like uh, anywhere else in the environment. So I can run from plant to plant here, uh, gathering some vegetables. So I have some food. I'm going to start get, getting hungry. I see my, my stomach is down in the yellow down there. Food, your food requirement doesn't tend to go down. Your, your hunger doesn't tend to go down real fast, but it, it does catch up with you. And once your hunger level is at the bottom, your stamina will no longer go back up once it runs out. Uh, it's a spiraling pit. Uh, now half of my farm has uh, just nothing there. That's my pasture where my uh, my cheese producing animals are at. It looks like I already produced some cheese because I produced some quality 63 cheese. Now the nice thing about producing animal byproducts is that they require an animal. And there he is. He's right there. Sometimes they're very hard to find. I got lucky He's right there. Let's hope he's worth riding. It's It might even be big enough. I'm going to push E, and I can ride it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the horses that, I, I think of them as horses, that your farm produces uh, are sometimes really great. This one's a, uh, her, they're always herbivores, and this one's a reptilian. I'm going to uh, move this off to the side. Uh, this Sometimes they fly or or have crazy jumping capabilities. I'll try jumping with him. No, he's not a jumper. Or or maybe they'll have uh, immense uh, stamina and will be able to run for long amounts of time. This one's running and running. He hasn't used up any stamina yet. The, the secondary set of bars here is his health and stamina. Unfortunately, he doesn't fly. He has two heads. I'm going to ride him around. He seems a little faster than me, and it doesn't use up my stamina. And if I got chased by something, I can jump off and let it eat this thing while I run for my life. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Okay. It looks like we've made it into the Stone Age. We're build We're making stone, and uh, we have our first town started. And. Uh, we're going to have people moving in here soon. Okay, now as your town grows older, things happen to it. And the people move in, uh, and the population changes, and they have requirements. And there's a way to find out about all that stuff. <clears throat> Let's look at the governance window that lists cities. And here I'm going to find my city called Dive Town. It's showing me that the, as of the last time this information was updated, all I had was uh, two levels of mine and a town square. If I right click on that, I can request the most recent report. This report is produced every 13 minutes. It tells me right at the top when it was last produced. And so uh, from that, I know when the next one is going to be produced. Uh, it's only ever produced one because uh, once once a city has produced more than one report, when you ask for it, you'll actually get two, and we'll see that later. Some of the most important information is right here at the beginning. Our morale is one. If your morale is positive, people move into your city. If your morale is negative, people move away. It's as simple as that. Your citizens are human. Uh, when this report was generated, there were no homes, and that prevented one person from moving in. The number of the morale determines how many people want to move in. Because my morale is only one, uh, I have the potential for one person to move in at each city cycle. So my population is still zero right now. The city has no one. What are my living conditions? I have five jobs. Uh, there were some under construction when the report was made and no homes and that's why nobody moved in there's also no food now glancing at the clock on my screen I can see that there's a new report should have been printed or, uh, produced already so I'm gonna ask for it. A recent report sure enough here we go at 314 uh, we had a new report and now I get a slider here that I can go back to that last to the previous report and and the current one when you ask for the previous report, you actually get the last two. 
because sometimes it's valuable to compare the two to, uh, to see what changed. Now I see that one person moved into my town and my population increased by one to one people. Your population will grow to fill your homes. Uh, each home is a spot for one person. Uh, this isn't houses, this is uh, homes. And uh, jobs are jobs for individual people. The most desirable situation to have in, this, uh, in a city is slightly more homes than jobs. If you just hold that as your target and check this report every now and then, you'll find your city will grow uh, nicely. I'm going to close this window because I'm done with it for now. I should have a townsperson now somewhere around. He's probably standing nearby. I don't see him. But at this point, the jobs in this town are getting worked by townspeople. And so, uh, uh, really, it, it, this is a really good point in the game to, uh, to stop or to just go uh, exploring or uh, fritter around in the area looking for uh, resources or w uh, what you're gonna what you're gonna build next but at this point what we'd like to see is some time pass so that a few reports would be go by the pot uh, which means that the population will increase at each of those reports those people uh oh something's attacking me once again the town square uh, makes me immune to these guys. Oops. It may not make my horse immune to him. It just makes me immune to him. So he's going to attack my horse and kill it. I'll come over here and stab him. Another carnivore. Hmm. I'm holding the button down because that'll strike with my knife as often as I can, and I never seem to hurt it, although it did turn and run. It could have a very thick hide or a lot of hit points, I see there's a tiny bit of its health bar has been uh, cut down. There, I got a good hit on it. Oh, I hit the head, darn. Oh, here's a carcass. Let's take our knife and cut it up. He's going to come and try to eat it. There. Now I want that meat. I got the the leather. Here. Sometimes you have to get down in here. I want the meat. Why can't I grab the meat? I must be clicking on him. Take the bone. Attack him with my knife. Maybe he'll go away. There, he ran away. Okay, that those things might be useful. He is a jumper. He's kind of hopping. Not a real good one. So, there's our and there's our townsperson. Yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't have any clothing, but that's because we're not... We don't, our town doesn't have any clothing. Uh, we'll have some eventually. We'll make uh, everything that's needed to make clothing, and then our townspeople will wear it. Uh, for now, we have a great little town started, and that is a mine, mining stone, and a farm making two kinds of food. I'm going to log off, and the next time I log on, I'll likely have a, po a full population of four people working this farm and uh, uh, an abundance of food and stone in my inventory.